happens to cause this usually? When a guy spins like this? Yeah. These cars here, like I said earlier, they have a little bit harder tire than you would normally run at Charlotte. It's an old obsolete tire purposely for these teams to where they don't have to buy several sets of tires. It's a little bit harder, and in turn, it's harder to hook up the racetrack. Okay. So we're under the second caution. It'll be a brief one. While we're under yellow and the sun gets a little lower in the sky, let's take this time out from Charlotte Motor Speedway. Getting set to go back to green this lap and uh, talk about having gotten bit by the racing bug. That's one reason T.G. Shepard's here with us tonight. It's, he got bit a long time ago, and I wonder <laughs> when you were involved there with that Folgers team. Did you ever hop in the car? I, I took my first few laps many years ago in Darrell Waltrip's car, and uh, I blew the engine uh, in, in Nashville Motor Speedway. Did you have to buy yeah, one? No, what happened was Good. I was going too slow, and the car <laughs> overheated and blew up. <laughs> I was at about 40. No, I love the sport half, half for many years. Okay, let's have another look here at what happened up in turn number four as we are going to get set to go back to green. Boy, they did a good job here, Mike. He spun the car. He's trying to hold it down the bottom. Boy, just barely missed the other car. But the key is to keep the brakes on. The banking will wipe him back down off there. He slides off the racetrack. We're back under green. Good bit of jostling toward the back of the pack as the leaders haul them off down into turn number one. Car number 99, Lee Tissett, who's got a lot of experience here, got scraped up against the wall there. Setzer and Cox side by side there. The Ford and the Chevrolet are two in-car cameras. And right behind them, Ronnie Sewell out of Shelby battling hard. Mike, here's what these older type cars do. Watch the draft push the guy. We've seen it so much lately with the new cars, the draft's not effective. He got out there, another guy got behind him, they drive right on by. The draft really works at this racetrack for these type cars. Mark Cox had to drop back in line. You're watching pictures from his car squeezing right in there comes Sewell. Looked like it almost fit. <laughs> it didn't look like it would for a minute. Going right back to the bottom, the yellow car is Mark Cox. He's running in sixth position. Dennis Setzer in the number four Ford is in fourth place. And right between them, that's the 31 car, Ronnie Sewell, the on-sat Carolina paint Chevrolet. Looked like the, the 31 car, the driver sitting there kind of giving him a motion sign to the, to the car behind him, let's go to work. They were trying to work together to get back around the, around the guy, but it's hard to do it if that guy uses up a lot of racetrack, and uh, it's not going to be as easy to think to get back around. Well, the reason why, they're looking at the three leaders scooting away. Look at the gap that's opened up to fourth place, the Ford of Setzer. Setzer's car shown a lot of strength all week long. He's got the ability to pull these two cars back up with the leaders if they'll stay in line. What he needs, Mike, is just a little more help from the 31 car to really tighten the pack up, and then they can roll. Let's check on pit road. Glenn Jarrett? Well, guys, one of the problems that the four car of Dennis Setzer is having, I checked with the crew chief, and he's got a real bad push developed in the car. It just won't go through the corners like they want to. He can't turn the car down on the racetrack, so you can see him just slipping away further and further. They need to get in and make a chassis adjustment on that car. Also, the uh, 61 car, we saw the big smoke from on the first lap. Uh, it did not blow. They changed the oil in the car this afternoon. They simply overfilled the oil tank and blew the excess oil out. Top seven cars in this event separated by only about a second and a half. We're watching the fourth place car, Dennis Setzer. And right behind him, the 31 of Ronnie Sewell and the 74 of Mark Cox. Mike, as Glenn was talking about, here's a here's the cars getting three of rest off turn four as we're fixing to talk about. This is the type race that we usually see. Here's one through the grass, and you saw what happened when he got it in the grass. <laughs> he hung on to it. Freddie Query of Kannapolis. That's when you need Toro as a sponsor when you get her in the grass down and he was slipping and sliding. He did a good job of straightening it out. He must have watched the Kannapolis driver has been down there before on this night. Yeah, I think you saw Elliot Nernhardt do that a few <laughs> years back. Cox battling side by side with Ronnie Sewell. And of course, this is allowing the leaders up front to get away. Last lap, 153 and a half. These cars show some speed. And here's Shelmerdine coming up. He's going to be part of that pack. What's Dale Earnhardt telling him right now? I don't know. You know, Kirk's a pretty savvy driver himself. He's kind of modest about what's happening. He says he's trying to learn this, trying to learn that. But in every one of these races, he's ran very well in all of them. And you saw him move to the outside and make the pass. The key, as we talked about earlier, is keep these little two-barrel carburetors wound up. Kirk's no dummy when it comes to this type of racing. Well, let's see if this pack can catch the leaders with Sewell leading them. Driver out of Shelby, North Carolina, the Kenwall racing car. They pass by Steve Allison down on the bottom of the racetrack. See, run through this area. See Kirk move to the outside as they come through the trial. If you can move out there, you actually pinch the inside car down and kind of bind him up in the corner. 
he didn't that pass was set up in the middle of the back straight on the front straightaway and he was able to pass him in coming off the second turn because of the momentum he had built up Kirk's really using his head right now but now while these four Chevys battle the Ford of Dennis Setzer has caught the three leaders and run off from this group there's the front pack Robbie Faggard up front Tim Bender in second there's Peter Gibbons in third and there's Setzer top of your screen we got our viewer phone in operating tonight. It's a toll-free call if you have questions about the Winston, about your favorite driver, about the sports division, or anything about tonight's event. You can call in toll-free. We'll try to get as many questions on the air and get answers for you as we can tonight. Mike, when we just before we started talking, before they got three breaths a while ago, when Glenn said that Setzer had a push problem, that's the kind of problem you want. You don't want to lose condition because it gets worse. A pushing problem increases to your favor. It gets better and better. The push goes away. The push goes away. If you hear a lot of race car drivers say the track came to me. Well, it's going to be coming to him, and you see him closing in on leaders. If you got a problem, that's the type you want. He's able to close in on right now. Those leaders are bunching. Three Chevrolets and a Ford. Back behind them, that torrid battle for fifth spot continues to rage. Lee Tissett at the front of the pack, or rather Robbie Faggart at the front of the pack, driving 89, the fifth leading all-time money winner in this division. It's only a couple of years old. He's taken $10,000 out of this place. And back behind that lead pack, a lot of intramural racing going on among the four Chevys. 75 cars really, really loose. I tell you what, now, this is the same car that got exceptionally loose a while ago. He's got, he needs to get that car tightened up. I mean, you can do that one or two times. You can correct that car, but sooner or later, that thing's going to get out of the these speeds. Freddie Query from Kannapolis, North Carolina, is driving 75. Now, Mark Cox running right behind him in the yellow car there. If in the middle of the corner, he gets down low on the racetrack, takes some of the air off Freddie, is that going to help exaggerate that loose condition? Exactly. Right now, where that car is at behind him, he should have a tremendous loose condition. The car, you'll see him chase the rear up. He's not going high because he wants to. If that uh, 70 car, 74 car pulls in behind him, it'll actually lift the rear wheels off the ground. He's got a very big problem, and he's correct. Of course, Mark Cox, seeing that car ahead of him being loose, knows that, and he's going to take advantage of it if he can. And he says, let me stick the nose up under this yeah. guy. He'll get loose, and I can pass him. <laughs> Mike Joy alongside Neil Bonnet. Buddy Baker will be with us, beginning with the Winston Open, commentating from in the car as he races and tries to transfer into the Winston All-Star race tonight. Lots of action coming up here at Charlotte Motor Speedway on one hot night. We're watching the second pack from fifth place on, and guess who that is? Richard Children owns the car that Kirk Schelmerdine spends his weekdays working on. Dale Earnhardt drives. We were wondering what uh, Earnhardt was saying. What do you think Childers is saying here? That's the man that turns the wrenches on that car. He is. He's wanting to get out of there in one piece get, get this other number three running. That's it. Richard and Dale don't seem to talk much on the radio. And it's kind of silent in that pit when things are going well. That's a good, you don't hear anything on the radio. That's a good sign for them. That pack has been split up a good bit by lapped cars now. And you see them start to string out just a bit. Mike, if we're, everybody wonders, we're sitting there talking about the Winston coming up later. You say, well, there's Childress on top of the truck. As I look out through the infill here, all of the Winston Cup cars are lined up. They got car covers over them. They're ready to go racing. They're just waiting to the, for their chance to go, and Childress is kind of enjoying this. They're waiting for the sun to go down and the moon to come up. Trouble on the 31 car coming to pit road tough break for Ronnie Sewell he was running in the fifth position when he came to trouble looking for his pit space and the crews coming over the wall with tires for him they'll put right sides on it let's go back up front coming around to complete lap 29 the front four you need to steal by uh, Robbie Faggart the pole sitter Tim Bender, Peter Gibbons, and Dennis Setzer up at that front four pack. Kirk Shelmerdine, meanwhile, has moved to fifth place. He's having quite an outing here. But this pack right here, now, Tim Bender has not made a challenge on Faggart all night. It's as if he is hoping that those two cars can break away, but it's not easy. No, Mike, but you could almost sense that on the top of the show when he said they were going to try to work together and see if they could get away. I'm not so sure they're content to run in line and then end the race, try to settle it between themselves, but these other guys are closing in on them. There's your one-two battle. And back behind this front four, Shelmerdine and Freddie Query have really been battling. Coming out of turn number four, Query's been underneath Shelmerdine every lap. 
I'll tell you what, that 75 car, that guy's been doing one heck of a job driving this thing. Watch him get in in the corner. Every time he's made this move before, the back end's been breaking loose on him. He's been, here it comes again. See the rear break out? And it broke out to the left, and he whipped down below the line. The car is so loose, he can't hardly hold it on the inside. He's got his hands full right now. But he's coming. Freddie Query in 75, former dirt track champ, champion of Metrolina Speedway near here. He's using those dirt tracking skills tonight. What happens with a car like this, Mike, when it's in that loose condition, it's real responsive, you know yourself, to the throttle. It's not bound up. The thing will jump around and run and it accelerate and flies through the corner real fast, but it also will get out from under you if you're not careful. He's doing a good job of holding the car. Shalmardine and Query racing now for fifth place. Robbie Packers led every lap. Tim Bender's been right on his tail. Peter Gibbons, Dennis Setzer's worked his way up the court. Then Shelmerdine and Query, Mark Cox is seventh, Tim Hepler and Marty Ward are the top nine. Skip Pope is the tenth place car. There's Setzer trying to move up on Gibbons. Looks like it's coming to him a little bit, Mike. You know, the car seems to be getting better as he goes along. 32 of 67 laps complete. This predominantly Chevrolet field has one Ford playing the spoiler right here out of turn four. This is just the opposite of what the 75 experienced. He's real tight. You saw him turn the car down the inside. The car in a good straight line. When that car is in that condition, he should be able to drive right on under him on the inside without the back end trying to get out front. There he goes. The car feels good to him, but that momentum on the outside. The, the four car is not moving around as much as the 75. He's a lot tighter. It's a lot easier to drive like that, but he still couldn't make the pass. 33 laps complete. This battle for third. Peter Gibbons and Dennis Setzer. Up front, it's Robbie Faggart and Tim Bender. Let's go to pit lane. Randy Pemberton. Well, actually, guys, I'm back here in the Winston Cup garage area. We're just shy of two hours away from the Winston. This is a Havlin Star 4 Thunderbird that Davey Allison will be driving in the Winston. It doesn't look very ready. No tires on, lug nuts hanging around. Look at what these guys go through to get this car ready. There's three sheets of paper with at least 100 checklist items on there to make sure this car is ready to go out there. And uh, maybe that's one of the reasons that Davey Allison won the pole, and he's the favorite to win the Winston. We are halfway in the Winston 100 for Sportsman Cars. We'll be right back. We're under caution for the third time tonight. Up against the wall, Tim Hepler out of Statesville, North Carolina, the Galaxy Food Center Chevrolet. And here's how it happened. Mike, we saw this happening going to first turn. There he is up in the middle, too. He just simply lost the car. The back end came around. He was behind about four cars. Here's the worst thing that could happen. The car goes sailing up the racetrack, and he's going to turn around and just get in the wall. Not all that hard, but here's the key. Keep the car on the wall. See him cranking the wheels back around to the right. No matter what happens, keep it up high, because if you'll watch, you'll see a lot of traffic come under him here. The key is stay out of that oncoming traffic, and he did a good job of doing that. That's just an exhaust fire. There's some fumes coming out the pipe, but it's okay. There's the driver walking down the racetrack. He is okay and will be set to go back to green here in a matter of a couple of laps. This race is 100 miles, Glenn Jarrett, and uh, have you checked along pit road? Will these drivers have to pit? Not have to pit. Most of them don't anticipate that at all unless it's a problem with the car. A little bit of an update. Uh, we saw Dennis Setzer fall back and then come on uh, as they ran more and more green flag laps. That's just what he wants. Just like Neil said, the car feels better and better to him, so he doesn't want to be under caution right now. The car gets tight when the tires are cool. I checked down in Tim Bender's pits to see if they were indeed just holding back, trying to save the car. Crucci said, no, nah. I said, we're giving it all we got right now. We're just hanging on. So uh, looks like Faggart's got him covered right now. He's not having any problems at all. You see it's starting to get a little dim here at Charlotte Motor Speedway. There's the sun just kind of peeking through, and I'm looking for the moon. Katie, you found it? Well, maybe not the moon just yet, but we have uh, got a lot of fans out here. They're in some really fine seats up here. can see every corner of the racetrack, so they're really pumped up. I found a man here. He's Mark from Kannapolis, North Carolina. And Mark, how many Winstons have you been to? Everyone except Atlanta. Is that right? Then you have some memorable moments from the Winston. Tell us about the, the most memorable one for you. 1987, when Earnhardt showed Elliott how it was done. <laughs> did he, though? Uh, he did. He but, did. Uh, let's see the year he uh, did the little grass joke there. Exactly right. A lot of people call it the path in the grass, but a lot of people also say that Elliot forced him down there. Which one do you think? I think he forced him down there. <laughs> I had a feeling. Well, Mark, what do you think the outcome of this Winston will be? Of course. There's Dale your Earnhardt. <laughs> There's your answer. <laughs> one thing about race fans, 
They've all got a logo on their shirt and on their cap and on their cooler, and they've all got an opinion. That's, uh, that's why they're here. Although this division is expected to produce some great stars of NASCAR racing, it has also seen its, uh, its tumult and its tragedy, such as the case last night in the...